Uh, welcome to the Center of Maths basic series on field theory. Today we're going to talk a little bit about finite fields. First, uh, characteristics. So the characteristic of a field is the least positive integer such that one added to itself uh, m times this positive integer number of times gives us zero. Uh, if there is no such integer, then we say the characteristic is zero. And we can prove the characteristic is either zero or a prime number. So uh, we're going to assume the characteristic is not zero, and also the characteristic is composite. So we have m equals r times s, where r and s are both greater than or equal to 2. Uh, so m times 1 equals r times s times 1. But r times s times 1 is really r times 1. So uh, uh, r, so it's r uh, times s times 1, which is yeah, r times 1, or 1 add to itself r times, and s times s times 1, and 1 add to itself 1 times. So since 1 times 1 is 1, if you expand these out, that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 r times, and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 s times, and you multiply all out, you'll note you will get this equality. You'll have uh, r times s ones on the right side and r times s ones on the left side. So, the, so we have r times 1 uh, times s times 1 equals 0. But fields are integral domains. We can take uh, inverses. If we assume at least one of these is not 0, uh, but that would imply the other one must be zero. So at least one of these has to equal zero. Uh, so one of the R or S must satisfy R times one equals zero or S times one equals zero. But this contradicts M being a characteristic because it has to be the least positive integer that satisfies this. So we have our contradiction and so M must be a prime number. So uh, we can also prove any finite field with characteristic P has P to the n elements for some integer, positive integer n. Uh, so the key here is to view the field as a vector space over ZP, the field with uh, P elements. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so each element of F can be written as some sum I equals 1 to n, xi, ai, xi member of ZP. Um, note these elements, uh, so note it's a vector space. So we have some base, so these elements must all be unique elements, otherwise these wouldn't be a base. But also note, so we can set uh, each xi equals to some element 0 to p minus 1, elements p different elements, and we have n different uh, xi to pick from, each one for one element of the base, so each one for one ai. But this is just p of n elements, and so we see viewing uh, f as a vector space over zp, it must have p of n uh, unique elements, and so we see uh, these vector spaces must have p of n elements. Uh, thanks for watching. Please check out sendermat.org, check out our blog, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.